Hi everyone, I'm Kat from Arts Generation and I'm here to show you how to create some beautiful artwork using some really simple materials. So some of you may have looked at our video on how to create block prints um, and now we're moving on to press prints. Um, press prints are made generally by using um, polystyrene uh, pieces of tile. So this will be from a larger sheet. So when you're starting to collect your resources together, you need to make sure you've got some polystyrene. You can actually use um, bowls or plates for that as well. So you may have in your home somewhere some um, polystyrene bowls or plates and you can cut around um, and use this part for printing, which is great because it's a free or recycled resource. But generally the sheets of polystyrene come like this in packs. Um, and if you can't get hold of them, um, you know, remember, you can always do this at another time when you can get hold of these resources. So this would be um, a great thing to get hold of. And then you need to cut them into the shapes that you want to print with. Um, I will show you how to create this fish here. He's been printed onto um, a piece of paper or card and he's got a background. So you need some um, drawing materials for that. You're going to need some like pastels to create your background. It's optional, uh, but you don't have to, but it would be nice if you could have a go at printing on different things like this. And then we've got some just plain paper and a, a, a plain bag again, like we did with the um, foam blocks. Um, and once you've got those, you're still going to need some block printing ink, which you may already have now. And you're going to need um, the shallow trays and the rollers, although I found out this was called a briar today, which is great. I've never heard of it before, but... There we are, this is a, a printmaking roller called a briar in its tray. Um, you're gonna need a wet and a dry one, like we did for the block prints. You're also gonna need a biro, um, quite important to make sure you've got a biro. And is there anything else? Things to print onto, we've talked about already. If there's some other things that come up, I will let you know. So first stage is to um, create our design. And on our block print, workshop we looked a lot at warm-up drawings so again if you want to change your subject like here um you need to um we did lots of fish last time you're going to do fish again for continuity but you might decide to choose another subject um like we've discussed before so i'm going to look at this nice stripy fish here i'm going to look at all the different patterns again i'm going to do my warm-up so that means i'm drawing with one hand one line drawing, I might do some dots and dashes, I might do some opposite hand drawing, okay? So when we've done that, we are going to be ready to make our design. So I will be with you in a tick. So I've gone to a hand shot, so hopefully you're better to see this a bit clearer. So this piece of paper I'm using is the same size as my press print tile, okay? And I'm going to draw my design onto here. Um, you can do it in pencil first, but obviously if you've had a few goes at drawing and you've got yourself warmed up, then just be confident that you'll be able to draw it really well. So just, you know, try and keep it as simple as you can in the beginning, and then you can start to add your details. So I'm just going to add some lines here, and I've noticed that they're quite close together. Then I've got my lovely large eye. And remember, this is a design, so I may change my ideas and adapt it to what how I feel my print would work the best. And I'm going to get these lovely thick uh, stripes in going down like that. OK, so that is the basic idea. There's my fish. Quite simple. You can spend time making yours a little bit more detailed. That's up to you. OK, maybe add some little extra sections right so that's done and then what you're going to do is you're going to put your fish on top of your polystyrene tile like this okay so I've done that and now I'm going to start to press into it so making sure you don't move your um, design I'm just going to check that you can see this so I'm going to get my biro now and I'm going to trace the fish onto the tile so you need to make sure you keep your hands, your fingers spread as a sort of clamp so that the paper doesn't move, okay? And don't be disappointed, but when you lift this up, it will be quite hard to see where you've pressed your biro, but it's an important step to help you get your design onto the tile, okay? So I'm going to 
slide my pen and I'm imprinting my design. So I'm going to do this section first and then I'm going to carry on around. If it moves a little bit, the, the pen will feel a bit weird on top of the polystyrene. Don't worry. Try to press sort of lightly at first and then go a little bit harder, dragging your pen. What you don't want to do is rip the paper. Okay, so it's very important that you check you've done all your outline first. You can go over it more than once. It really doesn't matter, okay? But try and keep the lines where they should be. So I've done, and all I'm going to do to simplify it is just do the outline and maybe a couple of the main features. So I'm going to do my... So there's no point spending hours and hours on the uh, drawing. Just make it as clear and as bold as you can because then once your design is on your tile, that's when you can add more details, okay? So I'm going to be pretty happy with that. Okay, so it's really hard for you to see this, but you can just about tell, I hope, there's a design there, okay? And I can see it quite clearly from here. Um, like I've got my glasses on. And now I'm going to um, trace that and I'll get back to you when it's completed. The design um, has been traced now. So all I did was just lightly go over with my biro, sort of dragging the biro through. Once you've got the main design on, don't worry about all your extra bits. It's the most important thing is to get your outline. And then you can refer back to your design. You can change your design a little bit as well. That's the beauty of having these stages so you can adapt it. I may leave out his mouth this time. Okay, so I need to make sure that this is imprinted enough. So now I am taking my biro and I'm going at an angle like this. Okay, so I'll turn it this way so you can see. Uh, I'm angling my biro and I'm pressing. What we don't want to do, obviously, is make a hole. If we make a hole, things aren't great. So it's a little bit tricky at first, but you will get the hang of it. And again, there are no wrong lines. This is a, a press print and it's all part of the process is to make sure you know that if it doesn't work first time, next time you'll be better at it, okay? I had a few little errors when I was getting ready to show you this, but it's all part of it, okay? And then make sure once you've gone over it once, you go over it again, okay? And here, right, so I'm pretty happy with that, but I still need to add some patterns, okay? So I'm gonna add some stripes here. Now, on this fish, I'm also gonna show you some ways of using other tools to create some marks. So I'm using my pen for most of the design, but you see this area here? Let's just get those large shapes in because I do really like those. And there's a nice shape here. Um, and I'm going to go over them again. Here we go, just nice and quickly so you can get on with what you would like to make. And then I'm going to show you with the end of the pen, we can do some spots. So can you hear? That's going into the polystyrene, okay? and I'm going to do some spots along the tail. Now these spots might fill in with ink, but they will work for at least the first couple of prints. Now I'm going to show you how to use some other materials on the fish. So bear with me, I'll be back in a sec. So I've got some, they're not particularly found objects, but I have just found them. So my pen, if I look at my felt tip pen and I look at the end of the lid, it's got like a shape inside a shape. That would have been quite good for the eye so I could use it on top like this now and just push it in with your hand on top you'll hear a little crunching sound as it makes an imprint okay then I could also maybe use um, that for patterns or for sort of bubbles around the edge so you have to press quite firmly and give it a little wriggle but these are quite nice for sort of backgrounds or if you were doing something that was covered in spots the other end is also quite useful. So the same thing would be for the other end. And I've got this like counting cube and that's quite good for small circles. So I'm gonna push those in and then I'm gonna show you them closer up. So we're adding an imprint to our fish, which is quite fun. And it's always good to use your imagination and your creativity. I might just go a bit wild with his spots here. And I can go over some of my lines, it doesn't really matter. Um, we'll leave the peg for later, um, but as I've said, you've got lots of things that will have um, little uh, circles or shapes on them and you can use those. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line around my fish. Just drag my pen, it doesn't have to be straight, in fact it looks nicer if it's not straight, around the edge. 
and we are going to not cut this one out as you probably noticed if we wanted to cut it out we would probably do it before we did any adding any um detail because it can snap and then you'll be disappointed so obviously if you want to cut it out all you need to do is maybe cut round the whole thing first with your scissors and then go in and out with your scissors you might want to get your grown-up to help you with that to create your fish like this this fish is going to be more like the ones printed on here okay all right so i'll be back in a tick to show you the next stage so the printing process is the same as when we did our block printing of our fish. Um, it's uh, really important to get some clean newspaper, um, probably cut down in or torn down into this sort of size. Um, you need your tray and your wet roller or briar, and you need your dry roller. And that's about it. And some paper to print on or some material to print on. Um, so I'm going to print my polystyrene tile fish onto this piece of blue paper, which I need to keep clean. So I need to keep it away from this sort of messy area. Okay, so I've chosen, quite unusually for me, a nice bright color. I usually do just black, but uh, we'll have a go with a nice bright color. And I've rolled my roller up and down, holding it by the handle and then resting the handle on here when I finish, so I don't get the handle all sticky. And then I'm going to roll the ink all over let's bring that forward a bit move our paper a second there we go all over our tile like this okay so i'm rolling it over and keeping it moving one way then the other just catching it with my finger here so it doesn't move around too much a bit more ink there okay let's try this first and the other thing that i thought would be quite a good idea if you're lucky enough to have more than one colour ink is to maybe when you put that down uh, take another colour like a quite a dark value colour like this dark purple um, and I don't usually do this but I just thought it was nice to experiment is just pop a little bit on the middle of the fish like squeezing a little bit of toothpaste and then i am lucky I've got lots of rollers so if you haven't got many rollers then obviously it might you have to go and wash this and stuff it'd be a bit annoying but I'm just going to try rolling that now into the middle of my fish just for a different effect okay that sort of blends in a bit you could use a bit more ink than that maybe but that's um, one sort of little experiment you can do. Now remember we said about when we're printing we need to make sure that the dirty newspaper gets folded up and put away. Really important. And then I'm going to bring this forward so you can see I've got my paper. The paper there. And I'm going to put this this way and hover above. Use your fingers as, sort of, as a sort of frame and you probably want to put your head up and check that it's roughly in the middle and then push it down and then give it a sort of a, a massage over the back so it really sticks to this piece of paper and doesn't move. Probably a good idea to wash your hands first, but I'm going on because I don't want you waiting, I want you printing. Okay, hope you're getting all this and then be confident, turn it over and then you'll see where it has registered. It's sort of, you can see the outline of your block there, your print block. And then with my nice dry roller, I'm just going to give some pressure. So I'm going to roll away from myself and then come and roll towards myself like this. And then I'm going to take, make sure I've got all the corners. Really important. A rolling pin would work fine here on this stage. A rolling pin for getting the ink is probably not a good idea. Anyway, we'll see what you come up with. Right, so I'm going to check my corner here. Has it registered? Has it printed all my corners? Because it's nice to have all four corners, yes. And then peel it away carefully. And there's your first print, okay? So you can carry on. If you've got a big piece of paper, you could print lots of times. So as a repeating pattern like this, okay? Maybe four in a row. You have to ink up each time. And you may have to get your biro back. I don't know what I've done with mine. Here he is. You may have to get your biro back and just pick out, maybe if it starts to block a little bit, just rub the biro along some of the lines again. You might want to put some more dots on. So every print is slightly different. It's up to you. Okay, so I'm back with you in a minute to show you how to create this print. Okay.
Hope you're doing okay. So to create our fish swimming on its lovely background, which we said earlier would make maybe a nice card, um, we are going to just quickly show you the best way to cut out your fish from a piece of tile or from the bottom of a polystyrene plate. So if it was on a polystyrene plate, you'd obviously want to get rid of all this first, all this excess. So you need to cut that all away before you start your design and then you do your design on this part, okay? That's fine. And then the other thing, if it's on a square of tile like this or a piece of polystyrene, cut away all the main shapes first like this going round because you will find cutting in and out some people can't bear this noise it's quite squeaky I don't mind it but I hope you're okay and whoever's around while you're doing this is okay maybe get your adult to do this section it's quite tricky so coming in like this but it's good practice okay for cutting away um, and then you can be a little bit more neater going up to that edge Try not to cut inside the edge because that's where your lovely outline of your fish is. So you get the idea. You want to make sure you end up with something like this, which will fit on your card. And then you need to get rid of your scrappy bits, pop them away. And then you can then decorate your fish like this one. OK, this one's been printed with. Obviously, this one hasn't yet. So then you go through all your pressing in with your found objects like this and you draw with your biro again. Okay, so you end up with something like this one. So I'm gonna use this one to print with. I've washed it just gently under some water and the paint, the ink comes off and I, then you can use other colors. I meant to say that about this tile as well. You can use other colors on here. All right, so now we are going to print this one. So I'm gonna keep you here for a minute while I've got you. And well, actually we're not gonna print it. We're gonna make its background first. So we need a piece of card that it's gonna fit on like this. OK, and I'm just going to use some, make sure it opens up the right way, uh, some blue pastels, some oil pastels. So you can use anything, really. I'm just going to do a really random, wavy, seaweedy pattern. So I might have looked at pictures of seaweed under the sea coral and I'm doing mine really quickly you will spend more time and I love using white on coloured white oil pastel on coloured card or paper because it just stands out and it sort of blends as you go so you can use it on its side and you can use it on its end it's the same with all the colours if you've got this is too similar to the background of the paper but you get the idea so you will spend more time than me. But that oh, was a nice little yellow there. Let's see what that looks like. That's quite nice as well. So as you can see, you don't need to spend a long, long time to create in your background. Um, but once you've done it, you could do different ones to print with. Uh, then you're going to take your little um, tile, press print tile. This time we're going to use some black ink. So I'm going to put my fish, whoop, put my fish on the paper so we don't get black ink everywhere. I've got my wet roller or briar I've got some really sticky ink it's been sitting around a little bit so I'm just going to have to be careful because we don't want to ruin this tile it's got a little bit thin because I've printed with it more than once now so there's some ink on there let's see that's not too bad so you can see where the roller goes off onto the paper it doesn't matter because we're going to throw that away okay so here we are roll it all over make sure you've got all the corners and where you held it with your finger make sure you've got that covered and then the roller goes back and then, as you know by now, that goes in the bin. We can put our paper to one side for a minute. I've got my card. I'm just checking I've got it the right way because it'd be really annoying if I did it the wrong way. Uh, right, which way do I want him to swim? So this is where you've just got to double check you've got it the right way. And again, you could write, draw a little arrow for up with a felt tip. Let's have him swimming somewhere in the middle. Push it down. Just register it like we did before with our other tile. And let's just give it a massage with hopefully clean fingers. Not like mine. Mine are a bit dirty. Okay. And then confidently turn it over. Make sure your hands are clean. Get one of your dry rollers. And it's harder to register it this time because you're sort of roughly guessing where it is. But you can feel where it's thicker, obviously. Um, there won't be that square to help you this time. So... Let's see, my dry roller could have done with a little wash as well. It got a little bit dirty, so the back of the card is not going to be as clean as I'd like now. I'm hoping it's all there. I'm just going to give one roll on the top as well. 
like this. So if you were doing a big collage, you could have loads of fish swimming on a big piece of paper. It would look amazing in all different colours. Right, fingers crossed everyone. Let's see. Oh, not right there. Let's give that another roll. So before you pick it off completely or peel it off completely, it's a good to check. Right, here we come. Here's our little fish swimming in the sea. All right, so I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm going to come back for another little demo on how to use... Um, found objects to create more of a pattern than a fish or an, ob um, an animal. So come back and join us in a second. So last thing I'm going to show you today is to create how to create some more patterned, maybe more abstract designs on your press print tile. So here's one that I created earlier using um, found objects. So if you maybe are in early years or any any year group really um, this might work really well for you um, all the way through to year six you can experiment with pattern um, I'm not going to go over loads and loads of pattern work right now but obviously the same as when we do our warm-up drawings for our fish designs we need to look at all different patterns and um, these are from a part of Africa um, these patterns um, I think they're Yoruba patterns and um, you can see here they've got some sort of zigzags and some swirl patterns some crisscrosses so it's a really good idea to really build up your knowledge of pattern before you start this actual activity or you can have a go um, at creating patterns directly without any worries at all so um the block here i printed not amazingly successfully onto the bag but i'm going to have another go this side because i want to use a circle instead the reason i want to use a circle is because our plates when we cut them out will have this nice circular shape here. If we're careful, we'll ask our adult to cut it out for us. Um, and that will give you a nice circle to work on. Or you can actually put a, um, a bowl um, over your tile, make a sort of press into it and then cut it out like I've done here. Okay, so, and then there's other shapes that you might want to create. Quite hard to cut out the star, but you could find like a cookie cutter, press it in and then cut round. Um, and then obviously we've got our fish shape that we did earlier. So on this um, circle, I'm just going to show you some of the found objects. I do a lot of clay work and printing with different objects. So I've got quite a lot of things in my box here, but some of them are really readily available, like we said earlier, like your felt tip pen or your Duplo or Lego. Um, obviously it does wash off, but if you keep a little set just for printing, these are lovely. These are cotton reels which you may be able to get hold of, and things like stickle bricks. I suspect some of your parents or older siblings might remember these. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And even straws will be good. Um, right, so just experiment first. So what I will have done first before I got to this stage is to press into just a scrap. We have usually there's quite a few scraps around that we can use. So maybe a, a plate that maybe broke, you could um, practice by pressing in first then you will have a knowledge of what patterns they make when they're pressed in. So if I push this one into the centre, and remember we really have to use all our strength here to push, and you, if, you, if I'm quiet, you can hear that sort of clicky sound, and that means it's pushing into that polystyrene. Don't worry about the mark because that has come off from where I used this to print with earlier. So don't print with it too many times or push in. We're not printing, we're making an indentation into the tile. I should have done that right in the middle. I haven't, it's off center a bit, so you can be a bit more accurate than me. And then we're gonna do like a radial pattern. I don't know if you know what a radial pattern is, but it's some, a pattern that involves radiating out from a central point. So what do you know that radiates heat? That's right, the sun. And we've got things like um, bicycle wheels. We've got things like flower petals lots of things radiate so i'm using my stickle brick and it's going to be hard for you to see but i'm going around the edge of my design and then i might use things like the edge of this um sort of i think it's a play-doh tool to so if you've got play-doh tools as long as you've checked it's okay to use them then they're a good thing to use because they will press nice patterns into your polystyrene so i'm going quite quickly because i want you to be getting on with this so that's all the way around. And then I'm going to show you, oh, here it is. I've got like a cog. So if you've got some like, it's not called Meccano, but it's something similar, maybe that you've got um, a puzzle or a, you know, a game where you have to construct 
I really like this because it makes a really nice effect. So it's almost like you're creating a sort of piece for a machine or a robot and I'm, you're going all the way around the edge. It's quite hard to press in, but you'll get the hang of it. Okay. And finally, things like pegs are lovely because they double up. They're doing two things at a time and I love that. I'm going to go all the way around the very edge. It's almost like the very last thing that I'm going to print. And I'm going quickly. You will spend more time doing yours. Right. I'm quite happy with that. Um, you can't really see it, obviously, because it's on white. But you can see, hopefully, that I've done my design. Right. Pop your bits back. You might need them again. And then I'm going to print onto a piece, a tote bag. OK. So there's my um, my design ready. And then I'm going to set up my printing area. Fantastic. So we are now going to print our uh, circular shape onto our bag. And the reason I've done it in circles is because I want to demonstrate how you can sort of print more than once. OK, so I'm back right back here. I'm just going to roll up the ink. So you will just have to bear with me a minute. You can certainly hear it. I'm going to roll my roller. I'm going to just put it on top so you can still see because it's going to be difficult otherwise. There we go. You can really see where your little cogs, your pegs, keep it as flat as you can. Okay. You might find there's bits missing where you didn't press hard enough, but it really doesn't matter too much. Okay. Now I'm going to put that back in my tray and get rid of the oh look I've been a bit messy there but you wouldn't usually roll out on top I'm going to cover that first so I'm not going to start in the middle I'm going to start here or should I start in the middle no I'm going to start in the middle so I'm going to go like this and here you could combine more than one design so you could actually print that in the middle and maybe your fish around the edge um, you could do a star in the middle and then print more stars or fish or combinations. So if you're doing this with maybe a, another member of your family and they're making a tile, you could share tiles and then you get a really nice combination of designs. So I've again, sorry, I've got to say, I've got thick card inside this bag to protect the middle. So always have a piece of thick card inside your bag. And this was a tote bag that we just recycled. We've just turned it inside out. Okay. And then lift it up. That's nice. Pretty happy with that. And then I'm just going to keep going. So while you're watching this, think about all the different things you can do with your tiles, your press print tiles. So you can create um, shapes that you can cut out. You can make cards and use your paints and colours on the background. Just make sure you leave them to dry first. And I'm going to pop that on there while I'm still talking. And I'm really looking forward to all your ideas um, and what you come up with and what colour combinations you use. And I really am looking forward to that. So I will see you next time, Arch Generators. Take care. Bye. Hi, I said goodbye too early. So just to recap, this is the bag that I carried on printing while you were getting on with what you were doing um, using our nice circular um, piece of uh, polystyrene tile and then we did some um, larger squares onto a bag as well which is not quite see a viewable but it's sort of there then we've got these nice cards where we have created a background using as I said you can use anything but I just use pastels because they come out really well I press quite hard with my pastels as well and then we printed with our little cutout of a fish and then we also made more of a composition because we highlighted the edges of our fish tile and when it was printed you can still see the edge which is a nice effect but don't forget this has got lots of possibilities uh, stars are great you can print them white onto dark color card maybe put a bit of glitter on um, and you can use different background color backgrounds to make your uh, fish come out maybe cut them out of card and stick them on a large aquarium with some other fish from um, other members of your family okay so enjoy making your press prints and I'll see you next time on Arts Generation.